notwithstanding that I am older than you and that I also have been working for women's rights yes, for many, many yes, years, let me say this. You are my heroine. Oh my I gosh. really mean Thank that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And it is an honor and a privilege to present this award for her commitment to empowering women in the legal community, the workplace, and society. February 15th, and Gloria, we all thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Judge Ellerin. You know, when I came in tonight, uh, of course, so many people said, Judge Ellerin's here, Judge Ellerin's here. And the one word that was used by so many people who didn't even know each other was, she is an icon. Let's give her a round of applause because I know we feel that about Judge Ellerin. Thank you so much. And I love the fact that when she was appointed as Deputy Chief Administrative Judge for the Courts of New York in 1982, she is quoted as saying, ERA may be foundering elsewhere in the country, but equal rights for minorities and women is alive and kicking in New York, end quote. And isn't that true? And for her, who has been the first in so many areas, first woman to hold the administrator's post, the first woman in the appointed associate justice of the appellate division, first department, first woman to be appointed presiding justice of the appellate division, first department, and founding member and director of the Women's Bar Association of the State of New York. She's just amazing. But I know you only suggested me, Judge Ellerin, because I'm also short. So we want more short women winning awards. But no, you did. Uh, thank you so much. And Lenore Kramer, I just an honor to have receive an award named after you because we know what a leader you have been in the bar, that you've won millions of dollars for women and children, that you have long been an advocate of women's rights, that you've been at the forefront, and that you have never stopped being that courageous advocate that we all admire. So thank you so much, Lenore Kramer to receive an award named after her is pretty special. And finally, uh, I would like to say I, I am blessed and thank God for my law partner, Nathan Goldberg, who is here tonight. He's been my partner and my brother, so to speak, uh, in our battles. Uh, and he, for 42 years, he and my partner, Michael Morocco, who couldn't be here tonight, uh, just amazing, brilliant lawyers, and you know, a mensch with a capital M, great human being, cares so much about women and minorities and their rights, and has been honored by other lawyers associations as a terrific uh, employment lawyer of the year and so forth. And he's here also with our associates and our one of our my associates. And they, associates don't usually get the credit that they deserve, but Byron Law is here, and I want to recognize him too. Would you both stand up and thank you so much for coming tonight? We do have an office in New York, and we're here on a regular basis. And uh, I'm just glad that they could be here tonight, although some of the other attorneys couldn't. Um, I actually almost didn't get here tonight because, uh, much to my surprise, someone in the White House offered me a very high-level position. But then about 30 minutes later, I got a call that I didn't qualify after all, because I've never been convicted of domestic violence. <laughs> and. Um, and also because I could easily get uh, a top secret security clearance. So I'm just out of the running, what can I tell you? Um, in any event, uh, what I often tell my uh, clients, and, and I say this in my book, uh, Fight Back and Win, that sometimes the ultimate outcome of a case is not as important as the struggle for justice. Although, of course, we'd love to win our cases, and we have in many, many cases. Uh, but if you fight for what you believe is right, and if you speak out publicly about it, raising that issue and generating public discussion might cause change, even if the lawmakers at that time are not ready to enact that change. 
So we believe that creating a climate of opinion that's supportive of change is an important step toward winning it. But we also tell our clients to be careful of what they say and, and, and to make sure that they've had the advice of lawyers before they make public statements or leap into the unknown. So throughout my entire career, people in corporate America, my adversaries, and even other lawyers have tried to intimidate me. It has not always been easy, but I have learned that if you have a firm and a burning commitment to right the wrong, and you are prepared for the battle, then you can overcome intimidation. That I always remember if you're generating a strong reaction that you're probably saying something important. And I have won many battles in my career by applying certain basic concepts and principles in my life. I start every day with the knowledge that helping people and fighting for justice is my duty, and that nothing worthwhile comes without sacrifice, self-discipline, and courage. I am a lawyer, but I always tell people who are not lawyers that you don't have to be one to help win change. That at Rosa Parks' funeral in 2005, then United States Senator Barack Obama reminded us that Ms. Parks had held no public office, she wasn't a wealthy woman, she didn't appear in the society pages, and yet when the history of this country is written, it was a small, quiet woman whose name will be remembered long after the names of senators and presidents have been forgotten. And that was a quote by then Senator Obama. And that's because she was, as then Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm called her, quote, a heroic warrior for equality, end quote. And I tell the, tip, the typical person, I don't like to say common, although we say in the women's movement that the common woman is as common as the common loaf of bread, and she shall rise. But that, that I tell people who are not lawyers, you too can be an heroic warrior for equality. And even if they're not rich, and even if they're not famous, that they too can make a difference, and they can make that choice to make the difference. That at the time, United, then United States Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton reminded us that we too can have, quote, a Rosa Parks moment, end quote. So I urge my clients to have a Rosa Parks moment every day, to challenge themselves and to challenge others to stand up for what is right. And that more than anything, in the face of adversity and injustice, that I want them to overcome their fear and be fearless, find their voice and not be voiceless exert their power and not be powerless. I want them to be able to fight back and win justice for themselves, their children, their family, and their community. That when they're feeling pessimistic or even hopeless, that they should remember the words of Susan B. Anthony, failure is impossible. And remember that there's no defeat in standing up for what is right and fighting injustice. That as suffragist Carrie Chapman Catt once said, quote, whenever a just cause reaches its flood tide, whatever stands in the way must fall before its overwhelming power, end quote. So I tell them to speak up, to fight back, and to seek positive change, that others will follow their lead, and ultimately they will come out as a winner. So I would just want to thank all of you because I know that the women lawyers here have really made a very big and a significant difference in the profession here in New York State and elsewhere. And as, as we say in the women's movement about the men, that a man of quality is not threatened by a woman of equality. So we thank all of you for standing up for justice. Thank you. It's very true. Thank you. And I want to thank all of the judges who have honored us with their presence tonight. I know you were introduced, but would you stand up so we can also give you a round of applause and acknowledge your presence here? Thank you so much. Thank you. My first press conference years ago 
that was instigated by the National Women's Political Caucus, and you'll see this if you are able to watch the documentary on Netflix, now playing on Netflix, uh, uh, was when they urged me to do a press conference, which I did, because I said the Governor Brown was not keeping his promise to appoint enough women judges. So they said, you have to do it. And I said, well, why me? First of all, I don't know what a press conference is. I've never been to a press conference. I wouldn't know what to say. Nobody's ever heard of me. Why would they come? And they said, don't worry about any of that. We'll take care of that. Just do it. And we did. And then he appointed more women judges. And then they said, do it again. And so I did. And, and so that's how it all got started. But we are so proud of all of the pioneers who are here tonight, because each one of you is a pioneer. And all I can say is, as I always say, my favorite saying is this. I'll end with this, the saying of Mother Jones, which I live by, pray for the dead and fight like hell for the living. Thank you so much.